Well, good evening. Glad you're here tonight. I know we have a lot of guests here because you're coming, you've are coming. you come to see your uh, grandchildren or someone, other child related to you. We're glad you're here tonight. At Geyer Springs, one of our core values is biblical authority. Uh, we believe God's word tells us everything we need to know about life, how we're to live, um, how we're to operate. And for us as a church, biblical authority is a key because it impacts all of our preaching, all of our teaching, all of our decisions. So with that in mind, we think it's vital uh, especially starting with our youngest children, that they have a copy of God's Word, they learn to read God's Word and study God's Word. So that's the priority reason we're here tonight. We have a couple of other prayer focuses, but we're going to start with that because that's our priority tonight. Brad Franklin, Brad, come on up. Brad Franklin is our uh, children's pastor, and he does a phenomenal job teaching kids the Word of God, and we're excited tonight to be able to put God's Word in the hands of our first graders. Thank you, Pastor Dave. It is really good to have each and every one of you with us. Many of you have participated, whether it be in a first grade or our fifth grade Bible presentation as we bookend our elementary ministry with the Word of God and everything in between is focused on the Word of God. We do this tonight really for three reasons. The first one is congregational. One of the things that I absolutely love about Geyer Springs is that we are not a church that isolates our children from the church body. Every week from first grade all the way up, and parents are more than welcome to bring children even younger than that into worship, we welcome our kids to join the church body in worship. They get to see the ordinances of baptism and the Lord's Supper on display. They get to sit under the preaching of the word, and they learn best about corporate worship by sitting with their families. And so I am so thankful that first, this is congregational. And in this congregational setting that we have, children are welcome to join in on what God is doing each and every Lord's Day here. Secondly, it's also theological. As Pastor Dave said, we are so thrilled to be presenting the Word of God. This is the inspired Word. This is the breathed out Word of God that we're giving. And as a result, it is infallible, it's inerrant, it is authoritative, and it is sufficient for all these boys and girls and all of us and what we need first to come to know the Lord because the plan of salvation is there, but also how to grow in Christ, in sanctification. The word of God is sufficient for all that we need to grow in him, to present the gospel, and to serve in a New Testament church. But finally, it's also generational. There are many, many, many decades of Geyer Springs presenting first grade Bibles over the years. And we realize that kids are going to take this Bible and they're going to use it in corporate worship and learn how to find verses and take it to Sunday school. And we know that as they keep this Bible, they're not going to have it all of their life, carrying it as a 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th grader, or even as a 30 or 40 year old. But we realize that this Bible will be generational in that they'll keep it as a keepsake one day. And we envision this Bible carrying it with them through elementary, using it, but being on the shelf one day that they'll pass on to their kids and their grandkids. And so to think about the generational impact of the first grade Bible presentation here at Geyer Springs, let's watch this short video together to get a feel of what we're doing here tonight. I'm Katie Winstead, and I serve alongside my husband, Casey Winstead, who's the lead student pastor here. And not only that, but 31 years ago, I stood at Geyer Springs First Baptist Church and received my first grade Bible. It was so meaningful in my life to have the Word of God in my hands and to be able to have it in my home. I watched my father, my mother, and my older brothers all open their Bibles regularly. So to have one of my very own as a first grader was super important to me and super impactful. Fast forward all these years later, we are lucky enough to be serving back at my home church of Geyer Springs. My daughter, Taylor Beth, received her first grade Bible a few years ago, and our son, Drew, will receive his tonight, and he'll walk across that stage, and he will have his very own big boy Bible to read on his own. I'm so blessed to always have been a part of a church that puts the Word of God first and opens it every single week and puts it in the hands of children and students all throughout their entire lives. Nova Aiden. Anna Claire Baroy. Iana Boykins. Taylor. Bracy Reagan Cottrell Sarah, 
Cecilia Elrod. Emma Ferguson. Madeline Franklin. Felicity George. Samuel Gwynn. Delilah Hinkson. Gemma James. <laughs> Vivian Jones. Estelle Leatherwood. Mariah Miller. Evie Nail. Carter Pickett. Caleb Poole. Owen Rupar. Ben Segovis. Joshua Skinner. Barrett Sutton. Jet Thomas. Piper Tomaszewski. Ellis Tomaszewski. Drew Winstead. All right, let's give these boys and girls a hand, first of all. Boys and girls, I want to pray for you, but I want to tell you I've written you a short note in the front of your Bibles, and under my name, I put the reference Psalm 119.105. The 119th Psalm is a wonderful psalm all about the Word of God and its importance. And the 105th verse says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Let me say that again. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Let's see if you can say that with me. You ready? Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. One more time. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. As you read and study God's word, it's going to give you guidance in the days ahead. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for these boys and girls. We thank you for their families who have invested in them spiritually and have brought them to a church that's going to come alongside mom and dad and help teach and train these young men and women in your word. Father, as they grow, help them have a desire, a hunger for your word, and help them to read it daily and to study it and obey it. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. All right, boys and girls, I am so excited you've got your very own copy of God's Word to bring to church with you and to begin to learn to read and memorize and put God's Word in your heart. And what we're going to do now is pray for you, and we're going to do it in a little different way. Around the room, there's a chair, and 
under that, or above that chair, rather, there's a sign with your name on it. And so here's what we're going to do to make this very simple is moms and dads, first of all, extended family, you go ahead and remain seated. I'm going to tell you what to do in just a moment. But if you will go ahead around the room and find your child's name and make your way there, when you get there, you're going to find a stack of cards with your child's name on them. As various people come around tonight to pray over you and your ch your child, we're going to ask that you would just give away those cards, and they will take those cards and covenant to pray with your child. Also, there's a book there. As I mentioned, we bring our kids into corporate worship. It's a guide to help you integrate your child into what we do as a church body every Lord's Day. And then also just a brief write-up about why we chose that specific Bible to give to your child. And so now, boys and girls, what you're going to do is you're going to go around the room to your mom and dad. we got some friends here that can help you get there if you don't know where they're at. So go ahead and look around the room and find your mom and dad and go right there to them. Give you guys just a little bit to get there. There's no rush or hurry. We can help you get where you need to go. So we have about five or six prayer points tonight that we're going to pray through over these boys and girls. And as we do that, I'll simply just be guiding and directing you. But where the rubber is going to meet the road is where you go around the room. And you, on behalf of the child, you bring them to the Lord in prayer through these different prayer points. And so I'll direct you through the prayer points. And then after each prayer point, uh, you feel free to move around to a different child and pray over them. Uh, but first of all, uh, as we get ready to do that, uh, I'll go ahead and ask you to stand and then just make your way to either somebody that you know or if you feel comfortable, somebody that you don't know and make your way there and we'll have our first prayer point. And as you get there, we're just going to ask that anybody who would feel compelled or led to pray aloud to do so. If you don't, then we just ask in your spirit right where you're at, you would be praying over that child specifically. Our first point of prayer this morning, or this evening rather, you see it on the screen, is just thanksgiving. Around the circle, would you just take a moment, somebody or multiple of you, to be able to just thank the Lord for blessing this family and this church with this child?
We'll ask now, if you don't know anybody else in the room and you came specifically for a first grader, please feel free to stay with them. Of course, you are welcome to move around the room and go somewhere else to pray. But if you know someone else around the room, go ahead and move to a brand new child. Get ready for our next prayer point. Go to somebody else and pray and get a card that you can take with you. Our next prayer point this evening to bring to the Lord on behalf of these first graders, would your group take a moment to pray for the salvation of that child sitting in the chair, that the Lord would bring them to saving faith, let them see their sin, let them see the provision of Christ on the cross and draw them to repentance and faith so that they will put their trust in him to be saved eternally forever. Go ahead and start making your way to a new family to meet and to grab a card from, and we'll move to our next prayer points. Here's our next prayer point for this evening is scripture. As they have a copy of God's word in their hand that they were presented tonight, will you pray that that young boy, that young girl before you, that they will have a deep love for God's word. They will have a desire not only to understand it, but to do what it says, that they will be a person of the book.
let's go ahead and make our way to a new first grader and get ready for our next prayer point. We have just a couple more to go this evening. As you get there, here's our next prayer point tonight. We are praying for evangelism. Would you pray that even at a very early age, that God would burden your first grader, this first grader, for those who do not know the Lord, that they would see the value and importance of being a soul winner and that many, many people would be won to Christ by the ministry of that child right there before you as they share the gospel and live the gospel with everybody that they see. All right, let's go ahead and move to our next first grader. We've got two more prayer points this evening that we want to pray through that are just essential for a young believer in Christ. Here's our next prayer point to pray over the first graders, the church. We need a generation of young men and young women who love the Lord's church and want to serve the Lord's church and want to assemble together with the body of Christ and glorify God together. Pray that that kiddo there before you would be a, a churchman, would be a church woman, be somebody who loves the Lord's church and wants to serve the Lord in it.
All right, let's go ahead and make our way to our last first grader of the evening. We'll pray through our last point, and then I'll close this out before we move into our next section of prayer this evening for this service. Last first grader. Our final prayer point tonight is going to be on the area of exactly what we're doing, prayer. Would you take a moment to pray that that first grader would be a person that is passionate about prayer, that they would know the Lord and commune with the Lord through prayer, that they would be a prayer warrior. It's incredible how God uses the prayers of his people to orchestrate his sovereign plans and purposes. And pray that that first grader would be someone that would go to the Lord in all circumstances, be an intercessor for people, and God would use their prayers in a mighty way to build his kingdom. Father God, tonight it is such a privilege to give these boys and girls a copy of your word, to know the way of salvation and know how to grow in you and to show others that same path. And I think about Paul's words to Timothy and how the scriptures were there to make him wise for salvation, even at an early age. I'm mindful of how his mother and and grandmother taught him those scriptures as a young child. And Father, I pray that that would very much be the story of these boys and girls, that families would come alongside and teach them the truths of your word. And Father, I pray that these scriptures would make them wise for salvation, make them burdened for the lost, make them passionate about prayer, devoted to your people and your church. And Father, I pray that you would just use tonight, those simplistic as it is, in a very powerful way in the spiritual journey of these boys and girls represented around the room tonight. Thank you for our church, and God, I pray this congregational, theological, generational uh, emphasis, God, would be used in an incredible way for your glory and for your namesake. And we ask all these things in the name of Christ. Amen. All right, everybody, go ahead and start making your way back to your seats. I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Dave for a few moments. All right, as you're being seated, uh, we do have a reception after this. I know some of you saw the cookies coming in and you had a hard time controlling yourself. We're going to get you to the cookies in about 20 minutes, okay? That's coming. While we're here tonight, because this is our monthly prayer gathering, we've got 
two additional prayer focuses we want to give some attention to tonight. You're receiving, uh, some of our guys are passing out some blue cards, and they should be coming down to your row in just a minute. I think we've got guys passing out. Yeah, there we go. Um, the next prayer focus we're going to take a few moments on is praying for our upward sports ministry. We're in the middle of football season. Um, there are a ton of kids and families out there. A few of them are Geyer Springs folks. The vast majority are not from our church, and more than half of those aren't churched at all. This past Saturday, on each field at each game time, the gospel message was presented, um, just kind of planting seeds. And over the next two weeks, the coach for each team will be presenting the gospel message again to those children. And, of course, their families will be sitting there listening in. So we want to take some time tonight and pray for that on the blue card. Uh, where it says praying for upward, you see coaches, participants, parents, and referees and volunteers. We'll take a few minutes tonight, and you just kind of circle up where you are with your family or with some others that are seated nearby, and just take a few moments and just kind of around the circle, if you would, pray for those four, uh, those four people, the coaches, the participants, uh, referees, volunteers, and the parents. We want to pray that as we're sowing the seeds of the gospel message, that some of those seeds find some fertile soil and we see some uh, children come to Christ and hopefully lead their families to Christ as well. So let's take a few moments right now and just pray through uh, the upward request on that blue card. Let's do that now.
Father, we desire to see people come to faith in the Lord Jesus. God, I pray for all of those who are involved in Upper, the coaches, the referees, parents, especially Geyer Springs parents, other volunteers. I pray that we'd always keep in mind that our purpose in Upper is not just teaching kids a sport, teaching them good sports and like conduct, but our purpose is getting out the gospel message. Father, I thank you for what happened Saturday. And I pray that over the next couple of weeks, as coaches have opportunities to share more seeds of gospel truth, God, I pray that there would be some soil that is ready and hearts that are receptive. And Father, I pray that uh, we would keep in mind as we're on the sidelines, as we're uh, refereeing games, that whenever there's opportunity, your spirit will speak to us and tell us and give us the words to say. And I ask you to just help us be obedient vessels that you can use to share the message of truth. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. One last prayer focus tonight. On the back of that card, you will see a name. Some of your cards under the name might have a particular prayer need that we know about. All of these names are people within our body who are homebound. They can't get here for services on Sunday. Most of them are connected online, but they don't really have a personal connection with someone in our body. So we'd like to ask you to take a moment and to pray for them. Um, if there's not a particular prayer need, you can imagine the loneliness, the sense of disconnection, uh, the, the fellowship they miss with the body. But if you would pray for them, and then this will be a little bit chaotic. Across the front here are some, uh, some note cards and pens. If you would take just a moment, you, you can't imagine what this would mean to some of these folks to get just a handwritten note, hey, letting you know I prayed for you and your church family thought of you tonight. All you've got to do is, is write the note on the back side. Just put the name. You obviously don't know the address. If you'll just put the name, we'll get those addresses this week and get those in the mail this week so that they get just a word of encouragement from us. One final thing before we pray and before you do that, there are also on the front here some green cards that say join the prayer ministry team. Every Monday, our staff team, as well as those who have requested get a list of all the prayer needs from Sunday. Every Sunday we ask people, hey, give us your prayer needs, we'll pray with you. So if you'd like to be able to receive that and uh, pray for some of those, this card will just tell you how to make contact with Kim Bailey so you can get added to that list, okay? So right now we're gonna pray for the name on the blue card for that person, uh, many of them single, their, their husband or wife has died, we wanna pray for that person. Um, who's homebound, that is a part of our church body. And then if you would take a moment, come up and grab a card and a pen, write a quick note, uh, just put their name on the card, leave them up here, and then we'll take care of getting those in the mail. So let's pray for these right now. Father, I thank you for these faithful saints that we're praying over tonight who've been such an integral part of our church but now find themselves at a point that they can't get out and they can't be uh, involved here week to week. God, I thank you for the, the opportunity they have. I, God, I thank you for the technology we have that allows them to stay connected online. But God, I pray as we're praying over them tonight that they would have a special sense of your presence, that they might even know that we are praying for them. And God, I pray for the loneliness they struggle with and the disconnection. God, I just pray you'd fill them with your comfort and peace. And God, I pray that you would just day by day give them grace as they're on this, this final leg of the journey. And Father, I thank you for their faithfulness through the years and, and the great benefit that has been to your church. And I pray that you would bless them for that, for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. All right, as you're getting ready to get up and go and mill, don't forget the cards are up here. Brad, is there any, is Brad in the room? Okay, they're all gone. I don't know what the instructions are for downstairs. Does anybody know on the reception?
They've all left, so here I am. Okay, just where is the reception? Does anyone know that? It's where? Okay, Playroom A. So if you're not part of Geyer Springs, if you go out the door to the right, there's a stairwell. Go down that stairwell and just around the corner, and there's a reception set up. Please jot a note card before you go. Thank you for being here tonight. Have a great week.